Hello again, it's uh, Harry Moore uh, once again. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, getting investment ready. Here at NMS, a lot of our work is involved with clients who are looking to either um, seek investment into their business for growth or whatever reason, um, or recover profits, or are looking to sell their business. And one of the things that we do do is to make sure that we can help them to get the best price for their business, uh, get the right kind of investment, by making them investment ready. So here's a, uh, a short introduction to the work we do on getting companies investment ready. So getting the best price for your business, um, becoming investment ready. Uh, first of all, NMS is a global consulting firm, as it says here, um, focuses on transformation and strategy, international strategy, operating throughout the world. Um, I look after the European side. We employ only senior consultants who typically worked at some of the larger practices, but our costs are substantially less, 40% less at the very least, because we maintain uh, low overheads and we don't employ lots and lots of junior junior staff. So that's who we are, briefly. So what do we mean? What's my definition of investment ready? Well, to me, it's preparing the business and the way it's structured sufficiently to attract the interest of potential investors, acquirers, and to maximize the level of investment. It's putting the business in a position so that it fully utilizes the potential of injection of cash in such a way that the benefits are maximized. Um, the key question is, what would you do if you didn't get this investment? What would happen? Is it making a difference? If you were doing it anyway, then that's not the right criteria for actually getting investment from an, uh, uh, an interested investor. So reasons for wanting investments, the two areas I'm looking at are, first of all, if you're looking for investment for growth or recovery of profits, that you, ranging from uh, being distressed, financially distressed, to simply looking to um, grow the business and improve profitability. Or are you look, actually looking to sell or exit your business and move on and do something something else. Looking to invest for growth and strategy, it could be for, for a number of reasons which I've listed here. Growth, expansion, achieving certain objectives, uh, such as venturing into, into new markets, new product lines. Perhaps you want to make an acquisition, part of a buy and build strategy. Or you're just looking to recover performance, you need some working capital to facilitate that. Um, it could be that you're considering uh, retiring and and that there's an MBO potential in the business. Key message is that if you are looking for investment um, and to bring in an investor on board, you've got to be prepared to change the way that you, you do things, change the culture perhaps of the organisation, change some of your procedures um, to make improvements. And also to supply information on time uh, as required by the investor, and to actually achieve the targets that you've set out in any business plan that you might have, uh, have submitted. That is equally important. So that really means that when you're doing your business plan, really consider, can you actually achieve this? Or is this just something to attract an investor, make it realistic? Um, and something that a lot of uh, uh, owners, owner managers and family businesses particularly don't like is releasing of equity. Sometimes you, you're going to have to do that if you want, um, if you want a, an equity investment. Um, alternatively, you're going to be looking at debt if you want to, don't want to release any equity. And of course, you're going to service that debt. You may also have to accept that you have another director on, on board. It could be a non-executive director, or it could be a chairperson, or it could be a full-time director in um, a particular position where you are weak, say, finance or marketing or something. If you're looking to exit your business, it could be, again, for a number of reasons. Um, looking to retire, you want some money out of it, all the blood, sweat and tears you put into it. Um, you'd like to get some value out of it, but perhaps you might want to stay. You might want to stay around and run the company still, but not be the principal shareholder. Um, perhaps you, you always plan on an exit. You want to build something, sell it, and go off and play golf in the Algarve or something. Um, it could simply be that the business is now struggling um, and does actually need a new owner and it's time for you to move on or you to take a, 
another position within the business. It could also be that the current investors, whether that's a private equity firm, venture capitalist, or um, an individual private investor, simply want to get out because it's not um, it's not giving them a return that they they expected or wanted. Sources of investment, uh, I'm not going to read all through all these. Uh, these are all pretty standard on the equity side. It ranges from private equity firms right down to family and friends. Um, there's crowdfunding, there's business angel networks, there's private investors, uh, family offices. Um, so there's a whole a whole range of uh, people to look at, depending upon the size of business, the type of business, uh, and the scale of the operation and the and the the amount of finance you want is. So if you go into a private equity firm or venture capitalist, uh, then most of these have a minimum investment level, which could be anything from five million to ten million minimum. Um, debt again, you get the same people. Um, some private investors will consider that. Um, of course, you can only borrow off them. Um, your family and friends, if they're willing to do that and believe in you. Getting investment ready, I think the, the, the three, three, three messages here, um, what I said here, um, institutional investors like private equity firms, family offices, VCs, etc. cetera, buy three things, management, management, and management. The key thing is the management structure is right. If there's a poor management leadership, and then you'll have difficulty getting investors. The strength of any business is in its management and its leadership. So what is the right management team? Well, it's one with a strong leadership, good strategic direction. Um, you know the marketplace, you know your products. You've got a, a reputation, perhaps, as an individual within that marketplace. There's good financial good producer control. Um, You've got a track record, you've had success. You might have had failures along the way. That's, that's not always a problem, but you've had been the main success. Um, and you're prepared to commit um, by investing yourself or perhaps taking a salary sacrifice, cutting salary, etc., to help out. So, but what happens if it's not right? What do we do? Does that mean we can't get an investor? Um, there's nothing wrong with telling the truth. Uh, leadership is, is essential, so providing you've got a good a good leader, um, there may be weaknesses in the organisation as well, you know, so lack of a finance director, lack of something in sales and marketing, lack of a technical function. But if there are those, I think it's important, my experience is it's important to recognise it and to declare it. So, yeah, we've got a good team here, but we do have a gap in a certain area which we'd like to, to fill uh, through this investment. So don't be afraid of saying that, and investors will not be too unhappy of that, providing you're truthful. And quite often they've got candidates of their own that are looking to do something, even run the company as a, um, a CEO or MD. So getting the business um, investment ready. So what shape is it in? Well, the first things, of course, is information. Information for an investor has got to be readily available. We've got to be able to see good financial records and not the hockey stick approach in terms of forecasts. Make these realistic, sometimes less than realistic, just to be safe. Um, and, and a key word is rather than realistic, I guess, is, is, is achievable. Can you actually achieve these forecasts? And market data, you know your marketplace. You know your percentage of the market, you know your market share, you know your position in the market. Um, you have that kind of relationship with your customers. Because it may well be that your investor talks, wants to talk to some of your customers. Um, knowledge. Knowledge is, is key. Uh, again, good understanding of the market. There is intellectual property in the brand, in your systems, procedures, in the technology you're using, and in the product or the service that you, you actually are, are selling. There's intelligence within the, organiz the organization. I don't mean just having a lot of clever stuff. I mean, I'm talking about intelligence about what's going on um, in your particular um, business community. Um, and structure, you know, make sure you've got an organization chart and there are clearly defined roles and responsibilities. You know, you know what everybody's doing um, and that the structure is, is effective. It's not just a chart, you know, we know what to know, who does what, it does actually, it does actually work. Um, and success, you know, show some record of, of successes that you've had in the marketplace with product lines etc um make sure they're demonstrable 
Um, some good success stories always help. And, and the reason that you are successful, I think that is important to say that as well. So all those, I think, need to be put into a package um, will help you to sell your, your business um, to an investor or acquirer. So the steps along the way to achieving a deal are, are first of all, is data, getting the information memorandum together, which um, we can do for you. Um, your other advisors can do that for you. Uh, some companies have a data room online where you can go into and you can actually access all the information you want about the business, its markets, its products, if it's manufacturing, its plant and machinery, etc. Um, information about the staff, um, which would normally be anonymous rather than names and addresses, um, etc. And the financials, so both historical um, and projected. And bear in mind, um, investors are more interested in historical rather than projected because projected figures can be can be anything. So make sure you've got good historical records of your finances. We then reach the, you know, the heads of terms when a valuation is put upon it. You may have your own valuation or your advisors may value, give you a valuation, um, which will cause you part of the heads of terms. We then go to due diligence, and that really is to decide about you know what price and what level of investment is going to be put in. And quite often that will change. Uh, if, for example, they find that a certain contracts in there um, that are a bit onerous or, or not so clever, or they find that certain product lines are not making the money they said they were, were making, or there are debts in there that which were not expected, which have got to be dealt with, then that could influence the, um, the price. So bear in mind that the initial valuation and the heads of terms might change through due diligence um, for, at the point of, of, of completion. Presenting the business to investors, and normally we have a, a teaser, and that's fairly simple to do. That's something to sell the company. It's going to be upbeat. Um, it's going to be positive, showing the good things about the business. Being realistic, but not being negative. So it's going to be something that will, it's the bait that will attract investors. You know, the, the USP, the reasons why this is a good business, the reason why you should invest. And it, this is a, a one-pager, two-pager at the most. They put out, and that's normally done anonymously. Uh, corporate finance and finance firms will do that. We do it. Um, I did it recently for um, a company that, uh, that I, I sold, uh, Romag Limited, where I did the teaser. And also did the information memorandum. This is a detailed document, and the more detailed, the better at this stage, because that will preempt, you know, questions being asked to do diligence. And this is going to be pretty accurate and truthful. You know, you can't hide too much uh, in this. And this will have the financials, will have details about the services, the people, the products, the plant, machinery, etc., um, the marketplace, um, as well as projections, etc. So all that comes together after the, the interested investor has signed the non-disclosure agreement. And then, of course, we get into, into meeting up and progressing um, towards, towards um, due diligence, heads of terms, due diligence and completion. So selling your business, similar rules apply. It's the T's information memorandum. Who are the buyers? Could be a strategic buyer, could be a competitor that wants to expand. Could be or somebody that's in a similar sector wants to go into your marketplace. Um, it could be an MBI candidate. Um, it could be um, a, a private equity firm looking to build, increase their portfolio, a venture capitalist firm looking to increase their portfolio. And quite often we see private investors as well looking to build up small portfolios of, um, of businesses, usually in, in similar in a similar sector. So my experience is that you never know who's going to buy your business. Uh, I've had some surprises when I've been involved in this uh, that you expect a certain group of individuals or organisations to be interested, and all of a sudden somebody comes out of the blue who you thought, well, why would they want to buy this business? But they do. So don't be surprised that you might be interested. So cast the bread widely across the water is my 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 um, my, my, my motto. Uh, what do I get for it? Um, that's what everybody wants to know. Um, be careful of um, business sale brokers. I've had bad experiences with them. There's a tendency for many of them to overinflate the valuation, saying that they can get the best price for it. So they create a, an inflated valuation um, for you and then potentially charge you a monthly fee 
sometimes a quite a substantial fee for actually doing a very, very nice information memorandum, lots of pretty pictures and graphs, etc. They'll be earning money along the way. Um, but when we come to actually getting a buyer, they can be less interested because it's been overvalued. Um, and once you've overvalued something, it's very difficult to actually start dropping down on price. So be realistic. How much you'll get for it is that how much people will want to, to pay. There are rough indicators such as um, private, sorry, um, um, profit earnings ratios, depending upon your sector, um, which we can advise you on that might be. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a combination of what you want for the business um, or the level of investment you might require to fulfill your objectives um, in relation to what the potential um, buyer is prepared to pay, of course. So why is investment readiness being important? Well, it really shows to any investor, any any um, um, buyer that you you you're professional, that you 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 are serious, you know what you're doing, um, etc. And to me, becoming investment ready is the only way of getting the right investor, the right partner for your business. You know, um, it's also the only way of getting the best price for your business or the right level um, of investment. So that is it for me. Um, if you're looking for um, to do something with your business, if you're looking for, I'm just moving myself around. If you're looking for investment, um, are you looking to sell your business? And we can help, we're consultants, we're not brokers. Um, we won't give you an inflated valuation. We can help you with the process. Um, we can help you to find find um, an investor. We have a bank of people that are looking to invest in different sectors, um, um, and that is what's across across um, across the world. But you know, my, so my focus is UK and Europe. So, well, I hope they found that of, uh, of value. If you'd like any more information, I would like a, a discreet, confidential conversation. Um, I'm available anytime um, on my email or on my telephone number. Speak to you again soon. Bye.